Um, so welcome everyone to this uh, new session of uh, today's event, the Covenant of Mayor Investment Forum and Energy Efficiency Finance Marketplace. My name is Paula Mendes. I work at the European Investment Bank and I'm here uh, as part of the Elena team uh, to, to, to bring you this present, to moderate this session, this presentation. So just a reminder, Elena is a facility run by the European Investment Bank on behalf of the European Commission, and uh, it helps to uh, public and private uh, entities to implement energy efficiency, renewable energy and sustainable transport investment projects. So today, uh, this panel is panel three, it's called Renovation Way Boosting Investment in Home Renovation. And the presentation that we have today is uh, the, the titled Refurbishment of Multifamily Houses in Vulnerable Districts of Barcelona Metropolitan Area. Uh, we have a 30 minutes presentation followed by 15 minutes question and answers uh, session. I will have two cards here for the speakers. So one, a yellow one when you have five minutes left and a red one for when you have one minute left, okay? And now I will introduce the speakers. We have two speakers joining us this morning. Um, first, I will introduce Jordi Mas. He is the director of the technical area of the Consortium for Housing in the Barcelona metropolitan area. He is an architect with a master in urban policies from the University of Barcelona. And uh, he has uh, hold several positions, but I, I will have highlight probably this one. He was deputy mayor for housing and urbanism in the municipality of San Coloma de Gramenet, which we'll, we will be hearing about the, pro the pilot project that started everything there. So that's why I'm mentioning it. And we also have Jordi Amela, that he is the coordinator of the processes and operations area uh, in the consortium for housing in the Barcelona metropolitan area as well. He is a lawyer, but with a vast experience uh, working in projects related to home renovation. And um, so uh, now we will start with the presentation. I will give the floor to Jordi Mas. So welcome Jordi and, and thank you. Thank you, Paula. And thanks to the organization for inviting us. Well, first of all, I, I will introduce you. Uh, please excuse me. I, I, I'm not managing the presentation by myself. so. Then please, next slide. Thank you. The metropolitan area of Barcelona, we could see that it's, we could say that it's the, the real Barcelona in urban terms. It's the one of the largest metropolitan areas in Europe and occupies the eighth position in terms of population. Next. But this is the real city, but in fact, we are divided into 36 different municipalities. Okay, and next, the consortium uh, gathers 35 of these 36 municipalities. So it means 35 municipalities, all the municipalities of the metropolitan area, excepting the central one and the regional government. Okay, and uh, our main aim is to uh, increase and improve uh, 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 the renovation of, of multifamily buildings in the area. Okay, next. You can see that in this area, the, uh, the urban uh, tissues are uh, next, are representing only uh, the 20% of the, of the, of the, all, all, of the, all the land on, in, the, in the area. Next. Next, please. And most of these um, uh, multifamily, most of the buildings uh, of the um, of the family buildings are multifamily ones, and they were built before 1981. And they are uh, they are not um, they are not in the land uh, in the same in the same. In, in, we don't have the same amount of buildings in all the on the old land. We we have some quarters with a, a highest amount of multifamily buildings, and others with a, a lowest one. So when we are trying to uh, enhance retrofitting in this area, we we have to adapt our uh, public instruments to the these differences. There's something that I have to explain to you. It's that in, in Spain, 
most of these multifamily buildings are um, owned by uh, every flat is owned by its resident and the uh, the buildings are managed by uh, condominiums it means that they have to uh, decide together what to renovate and how to renovate it means that it's very very difficult to them to decide this because it's a very complex uh, process and please next you will see as well that the net family income is not the same as well and in this uh, in this quarter with uh, with the highest amount of uh, of multifamily old buildings we can see that there's uh, a high concentration of people with low income uh, low net income <clears throat> so there's another problem it means that in vulnerable areas we have people with uh, low incomes uh, having to decide how to renovate their own buildings okay so please next and of course, at the same time, in these uh, the private areas, we can see that we have more what we say uh, called risk uh, indicator. It means that the energy performance certificates demonstrate to us that these buildings have a, a, a bad uh, energy performance and they are having at the same time very uh, low energy consumption levels. So it means that they are, in fact, they are having cold in Spain, if there's cold as well, and uh, they maybe they are too hot sometimes. Okay, so please next. What we can see is that in the, the private areas, mostly ninety percent of the buildings need a renovation or have or have this potential need for renovation according to their age. Okay, and in the high in the wealthiest areas. Only 38% of the uh, buildings need this, uh, they have this need of renovation, this need for renovation according to their age. Please next. But if we look at the renovation grants that us as consortium, we are, we are managing in the last years, we can see that uh, the wealthiest is the area, the, the, mar the more the, they ask for grants and they get them. Okay, so in fact, with this uh, policy, we were look, we were working uh, until now, uh, of uh, giving grants to everyone uh, in the same in the same way. What we are in fact, we are using public money in the in, in not in the best way in, in order to uh, deal with urban segregation. Okay, so please next. So we uh, this desi design uh, a, a program, um, a plan, in fact, a plan which divides the area in several in in in, in several different. Um, we we de we um, we define uh, the different uh, uh, situations and the and the um, the the, the um, different uh, conditions of every quarter. And we define uh, five different programs which are adapted to these different situations. Please next. In the first program, next. Next. So what we have in this program is for the wealthiest areas. Uh, what we have here is that we are designing a website in where you will be able to introduce uh, your, uh, your address. <coughs> And you will have uh, an approach of the cost of your uh, total renovation, and and then um, you will see more or less, uh, um, uh, you will have more or less an idea of which could be this cost. And we offer to the to the condominiums the possibility of ask for a technical project grant that uh, covers 100% of the cost, the total cost of the technical project. And they have, will have as well public financing or private. Uh, we are working in, in both, uh, in both uh, possibilities. And then what we have now, and, and it means that it, it uh, finishes in the month of July, is a 35% grant of the investment cost of the renovation. And afterward, we will see this, how it, uh, it, uh, how it, uh, it changes 
because we will uh, have this next generation Europe uh, <coughs> program. In the second, in the second uh, program, this is for middle uh, middle uh, income uh, families. We can can you share the, the next, please? Now, what we are doing here? No, back. Thank you. Uh, what we have here is the same the same list of uh, programs, the, the same list of instruments. Excuse me, from the first program, but we add here an information campaign that is uh, is uh, addressed to these uh, to these uh, condominiums. Okay, in order to explain them more that they have all these uh, instruments and that they can use them. Please next. In the third program, next, which is for uh, low income uh, regions. Next, please, or neighborhoods. What we are uh, introducing here, uh, it's a, an, another step. We will, uh, we will deploy a community mediators in the neighborhoods in order to talk to the neighbors, to uh, explain them all these instruments and to convince them, okay? And next, please. And in the fourth, which is the, for, for this presentation is the important one, is for vulnerable, uh, most vulnerable areas, okay, the poorest areas in the, in, the, in the metropolitan area. And you can see that they are uh, all of them together. And we have here 12 different quarters, but they are together. In, in, we are in a, in a um, process of sur urban segregation that we want to uh, fight, okay? <coughs> against which, which we, we want to fight. And uh, we are using an instrument which is called priority areas for building renovation. That's something that is possible according to the Catalan law of uh, housing and urbanism. And please next. And I'm going to explain first, uh, can you go back please? Thank you. I'm going to explain going to here. Explain. The pilot uh, that we uh, developed in the in municipality of Santa Coloma de Gramanet, which is here in the in the metropolitan area. Please next. Uh, it's a municipality with 120,000 uh, uh, inhabitants, and in this area, please next. 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 We pick. Uh, um, some uh, some buildings that were together in a street. Please next. With these characteristics, 32 uh, residential buildings. It means six five six hundred and forty nine owners. You can imagine the uh, the needs of managing uh, that what it, it 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 means. Okay, and you can see here several different uh, data about the area with uh, resident owners uh, being the, in the 44% of the flats and then other resident, other owners that have this, their, uh, their flats rented and banks and whatever after all the financial crisis we had, okay, and all the problem with the mortgages and whatever. So please next. So what's an idea for building renovation? Well, the first question is, uh, it means that we decide the renovation of private buildings is in the public interest, okay? Not in, in a common sense, but in, in, in real strict sense. I mean, it's very interesting for the public uh, to, to renovate these buildings. These uh, buildings are in uh, vulnerable areas. They are not being renovated in the, in a, in, they are not being renovated, in fact, okay? So it means that we uh, decide to, uh, to um, use a public leadership, okay? But next, we have to deal with a private ownership, okay? So it's important to um, build a public-private cooperation method, okay? Then what we have, what we, be, we do is a town planning approach. That's what the law uh, permits us. And it's uh, in, in this uh, town planning approach, we, uh, the, as public authorities, we define, we define the area 
and uh, we uh, we do all the all the works in order to uh, renovate these buildings. Okay, so we decide them. We decide that these works are like public works. Okay, but they are done in private ownerships. Okay, the, uh, there's an urbanistic a town planning approach that that allows this, and we that we are doing is to um, adapt the town planning uh, legal uh, instruments to renovation, okay? There's public financing with the European Bank of Investments and afterwards, Jordi Amela will explain this. And we have grants to them and we offer a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, possibilities to the, uh, to the owners. Please, next. We, we have an agreement with every condominium between the condominium and the local authority. I mean, we are, uh, we are using uh, two um, different approaches here. From one side, this legal and, and, and the communities, the condominiums are in fact obliged to do this renovation because they as owners, they have a lot of, uh, of legal obligations in order to keep their buildings in, uh, in, in good management. Okay, but at the same time, we are offering them a lot of instruments in order to help them to do this. Okay, so each owner be chooses between several payment options. Even they can choose not to pay, and they and they will pay in the future. Okay, and next, please. And then uh, what we did was as well an architectural competition because as we had all these buildings together in order to uh, improve the uh, aspect of the of the street. Okay, next. That that's important. As we do all these, uh, we we give them give to the communities the architects and they do all these projects. And 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 uh, we uh, are like conciliars for the for the communities. We boost the energy renovation uh, in these buildings. Okay, the 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 um, the um, percentage of uh, energy renovation. Okay, so from this normal ten percent, we we look in this we have in the in the in these quarters that normally if we don't have this uh, public leadership only 10% of the buildings do some kind of energy renovation works. In these areas, they, uh, they, uh, they rise to uh, 80%, okay, next. They improve the energy performance certificates, next. And what we gave, we, what we give to the owners is the possibility to pay in the future uh, monthly. Okay, in fees that normally are around 60 euros, okay, or around, it means that it's very possible to them to, to afford this, this money. Next. And of course, that means that the average investment per house uh, increases as well very much, okay, from these normal uh, renovating rates we have in normal buildings with the normal procedure of uh, talking between them and, and um, having this decision ba made by themselves without any kind of help. Okay, next. Most of the owners decide to pay in five years. Next. And we have an expected default of around 5% that then we manage as public authorities in order to have this money back. Okay. Next. Next, you can see now here how the area changed. Next, with very funny colors. Next. And they are very, very happy. And next, what we, now I'm finishing my part. And uh, what the, the question now is how to escalate this. this how to uh, develop this uh, way of uh, renovating in a, in a, in a, within a highest speed and a highest scale in order to renovate all this that amount of, uh, of houses in, in multifamily buildings we have in the metropolitan area. So Jordi Amela will explain you uh, how are we dealing with this, uh, 
with this challenge. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you're still there. <laughs> Yes, we are. Don't worry. So Jordi Amena will continue the presentation. In the meantime, please ensure that you can send your questions uh, via the chat as soon as possible. And uh, here is Jordi Amela for the next part. Jordi, I cannot hear you. I was saying hello, good morning, and uh, thank you very much uh, for the organization to invite us and uh, to give us the opportunity to explain uh, this project. Uh, as Jordi said, he's explained uh, a case of success in Santa Coloma de Gramenet. So now our uh, our main our main aim is how to scale this case of success. Uh, into the metropolitan area within the 35 uh, municipalities. So our main goal with this program we, uh, we're setting is to scale from uh, the case of 386 flats to 10,000 flats within the 35 munici municipalities. This, uh, in order to, to achieve this, this goal, we are going to concentrate all the management in the consortium so we're going to uh, agree which areas we are going to, uh, to, to renovate with the municipalities. But to achieve this goal, we, we, we need financial instruments. So first of all, we managed to get a loan from the European Bank of Investment for 50 million euros, which will generate an investment of 100 million euros. Next, from the Elena, we've, we've obtained a grant for 2.5 million euros, and next, then we need the agreements between the consortium and the different municipalities. Also, we have other agreements with the Spanish property register, which we will see in in next slide. As for the loan from the European Bank of Investments, this is a uh, when we, when we undertake these programs, one of the main pro difficult difficulties we find is a finan financial support to undertake the, the program. So if we're talking of, of, of a program which will need an investment of uh, 100 uh, million euros, we think that this uh, public financing will come up from grants, part from the owners which will not uh, uh, get any or need any financing and then uh, another part from the owners which will need the, the financing of a maximum we've set a, a financing of maximum 15 years so we expect to obtain from grants 40 million euros uh, 40 sorry 40 million euros uh, this amount will come probably from next generation uh, funds so we haven't yet got uh, enforced the law of uh, how the government uh, are going to set these grants. Probably we're thinking from press releases the government has done, this percentage is going to be higher, but in any case, we're working with a 40% right now. And, and then we think that 10% of the owners, mainly it's in, this, in these areas, we have a lot of uh, property which uh, through the crisis has uh, turned uh, to the banks. So they will not need any finance and they will just pay straight out as works are finished. And then as for the individual owners, they will manage, they will be able to achieve uh, finance of uh, those 50 million euros up to 15 years. So this really, this, this loan, what uh, allows us is to scale all this program uh, in order to reach the goal of 10,000 uh, flats to be refurbished. The, the, this loan is what initial allows us to pay all the expenses which have to be uh, paid at, right at the start. As works are finished, we have to uh, pay all the contractors. So this loan really what allows us is to uh, scale this uh, this this program. How the pay the, the individual owners are going to pay the the cost of the refurbishment? Well, they can make monthly payments up to 15 years term with no interest. So, in order, as Jordi has said, in the case of Santa Coloma de Gramanet, this we think it'd be around 60 euros a month, 80 euros a month. That's something we think they can uh, they can manage. But of course, because in, we are in vulnerable areas, we also need other instruments, 
there are some families which are in a very vulnerable economical situation and they can afford any expense. So also what we have sent is a 100% returnable grant. What does that mean? That means that uh, we're going to pay the whole cost of the, of the refurbishment for that family. But on, on, on the other side, we're gonna make sure, we're gonna put in the registered property the obligation that they return this money when the, the property is transmitted. So sooner or later, we're gonna recover this money. But at the same time, we remove the principal object, which is families within those buildings that are not able to pay. And at the same time, other families cannot uh, cannot substitute their payment. So that was what that is one of the main obstacles in order to get agreements with the condominiums. Uh, the Elena grant is uh, a grant for two point fifty two million, and that allows us to uh, take undertake all the technical project, the mediation teams and the information actions for the owners. That means that we are going to be under control of all the technical projects. We're going to do all the mediation teams in order to explain the program and facilitate all the data we need from the owners. Uh, so that will be with no cost to the, to the owners. Finally, we're going to need agreements between the consortium and other institutions with municipalities. As Jordi has explained, introduced before, we're going to use urban law. Urban law traditionally in Spain was used to, for new developments or transform land. That is from residential, for example, to or, uh, from commercial to residential land. Now we're going to use this urban law, thank, uh, thanks to a modification in the Catalan urban law, in order to do refurbish, refurbish, refurbishment of the, of the buildings. So that will allow us to enforce that uh, refurbishment into, the, into those buildings and then that removes another obstacle, which is the agreement within the communities. That because either because they don't get on uh, agreed on what they have to do, or either because they can't pay. So either, either because it's enforced by law, or either because we've got the finance that will allow us to remove some of, of the obstacles we find. <clears throat> also, at the same time, as I said, we'll need to consult the registered property and. Uh, also put in the registered property in the cases we get, we give out a, a grant of 100%, we'll need to do that because we're dealing with a lot of flats, we need to do this electronically. So we're gonna also make an agreement with the registered property in order to do all this electronically and facilitate all the, uh, all the management we will need with the program. As for the management instruments, as I've said, we'll, need, we'll have the mediation teams, technical teams, uh, all the IT we need, uh, all the IT programs and communication. As for the mediation teams, we have construct, contracted them through the Lena funds, and the main task will be the main task will be to explain the program, to allow or to obtain all necessary legal authorizations for to allow e communication, confirm the data we have obtained from the red property register, so there is no mistake obtain any complementary information necessary for the project and be in contact with municipal authorities in case the intervention is needed if a conflict is detected. Because we'll be in vulnerable areas, it is, it, we think we might find some conflict at some stage. So they need to be in contact with the municipal authorities. As for the technical teams, also they are contracted with LM funds. There'll be two types of contracts there. One would be for the architects, which, which we, uh, will undertake the technical projects and mediation while they're working on the project with uh, the owners during the project preparation and also during the refurbishment works. And another team, which will be the technical architects, will be, will be need, will, uh, do the execution management or the refurbishment. We have the two teams so that the architects can concentrate on the, on the project and what has to be done, and the technical architects can concentrate on the execution and making sure the project can be, uh, uh, contains everything that is needed. They have been contracted through a framework agreements. We will have uh, five municipalities, but within these five municipalities, we'll have different sectors. So we, if we have to contact at one at a time each team, that means we need at least three months to contract, or between three and five months to contract 
each team. So what we have done is a framework agree agreement which will allow us to have a list of 20 teams for each contract that has been selected. And each team will be allocated a sector, which in the area, of an average of 200 flats. As for IT, we, we, to manage this program, we have different IT instruments that have been implemented. That is a new uh, IT program to manage all the process. Is the approval <coughs> the approval of the area the development of the sectors with this area will declare an area and different small sectors of 200 flats so this will this it program will allow us to do all this electronically to also control all the contracts all the grants and all the ma budget management so all this will be in one program in in order to have a, a good control of uh, of the project also, we have obtained and uh, uh, we're working that, uh, on a lecture program because all we are getting from the registered properties are PDF uh, files. So really, we need to read them. Otherwise, we would need a lot of people to turn those PDF into Excel. In, into Excel. So we have a program that will do this for us. And then a new program to inter integrate all technical information related to the program, which will also allow all the technical the technical area to follow all the program development and and have to, and to make sure how the execution is at any time. Finally, the information and and in, and uh, in communication, we have different uh, leaflets and uh, a web, as Jolie has explained, that will allow to attend owners' demands and questions that will be implemented. Initial meetings will be held with the owners to explain the program and the calendar, and the mediation teams will explain the development of the program. As for the phases, we have different phases. We have uh, a calendar here. Really, we keep talking each sector will take us a list. We, we, we think about a year and a half, almost two years, since we start until the works are, are finished. And uh, that's uh, all, all for me, and any questions will be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jordi Amela, and thank you, Jordi Mas, for the presentation. Um, so I do have a question here, and before that, because it's, it's, it's maybe related to, uh, that it's maybe related to Elena, I encourage everyone to send the, the questions through the chat. But before going to the question of uh, Damir Stanicic, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I would like to ask you one particular question that maybe you didn't touch upon, and is that what is the energy, the energy ambition of this project? So, uh, what are you planning to do in terms of refurbishment? What, what's the goal? Could you maybe um, uh, give us a word on that? Well, um, our uh... Our initial goal is a, is a very conservative one because as we are dealing with uh, such uh, families with uh, a lot of economical problems and whatever, the, the cost of the, of the works are, is the, the most important uh, uh, question. I mean, that. So uh, at, for the, at, at least uh, we want to uh, reduce 20% the energy perform the energy needed to um, for um, for um, uh, as a heating and cooling the the building at least twenty percent. Now with this next generation perspective and possibly possibly the, the um, um, higher amount of uh, grant for the owners and whatever, probably we 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 will be able to increase this, uh, this, uh, this ambition, because of course, uh, we want to uh, reduce as much as possible the needs of, uh, of, uh, of heating and cooling of the buildings, because uh, in fact, most of the families, they don't have enough money to, to, to assume the cost of these of this energy needs, but it will depend on the final uh, structure of grants we will have with this next generation project. So uh, the kind of works is to, to introduce a, a new isolation in facades and in roofs. That's the, uh, the, uh, basic, uh, ba the basic operation. And according, uh, depends on what we have, probably we will improve uh, windows uh, and other things, but mainly windows especially. Okay, thank you. Um, now I will, I will 
uh, I mean, we have received one question from Damir Stanicic, who says, who provided the guarantee for the Elena, Elena technical support? I guess, I mean, in, the, in this case, there, there is no guarantee requested as, as you are a public entity. But uh, I don't know if you want to say a word about the, the, the process going through the, to get the Elena technical support. And please, uh, I mean, <laughs> openly. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well it's, a, it's a very long and detailed process that at the end you finish and sometimes it seems that it won't but but uh, that's something well I, I mean it's it's interesting because at the end all these questions you asked paola because you were the person who were dealing with our project all the questions you did to us, they they had a lot of uh, common sense, and we I think it helped us to improve and to detail more the project. We had this uh, pilot before that helped us a lot, but of course then we we should we had to understand of course the the intern the inner uh, inner logical uh, inner um, needs of the of the Elena project as well and of the European investment bank and the European Commission and whatever and I think that at the end we understood perfectly so we could uh, could um, concentrate the Elena help in the questions that could be helped uh, in a good way for for Elena and the rest it, it's going through our own uh, budget and whatever so it was very interesting okay so a little bit long but <laughs> interesting <laughs> thank you thank you for that um i do have another question we still have some minutes so i remind everyone to send the questions via the chat but in the meantime um you mentioned something that maybe you know kind of passed through a little bit quickly that there are some banks involved or that maybe you know other owners of those buildings so no you don't only have always 100% residential owners or a kind of, you know, person owners, I don't know how you say it. But, uh, you know, how do you deal with this situation where you have a, a commercial entity being involved in the ownership of a building? Well, uh, we, first of all, before we get into this area, we, we analyze each owner. So before we get into the area, we know all type of owners and our mediation teams will inform us also which one uh, are residents, which one uh, are owners who also live on their flat and those, that are, and those are the owners who have tenants. At the same time, some may be physical uh, owners, physical persons, so that's owners, private owners, other might be companies. As for the companies, uh, to the project in order in order to approach and to execute the project it is not a great problem for us because it, it is endorsed by the human law that they will pay so that we will have no problem with that on the other side we must we have owners for example banks that have a, a, a great uh, number of, of flats which they do not manage those flats so we might have other conflicts or other problems inherent to the life in, in the building, but not to the project and execution of, of the works. So that's where the mediation team and the municipality authorities will work, work together with us in order to try and solve all, all these problems or to implement other solutions that will accompany uh, the program. But uh, in order to execute the program, it is not a problem. In any case, those commercial owners are commercial owners of uh, flats, but residential flats. It is, it, they are not being used as commercial offices or any other offices. So rather the problem is how that flat in, in that building is working or is uh, having a, a relation with the rest of the owners or the rest of the tenants. So that's where the conflicts we will have to manage, but not from the economic point of view or not from the point of view of uh, agreement as to what uh, refurbishment works will have to uh, be undertaken. I don't know if Jordi wants to complete the explanation or, or is something else to add? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So. 
um, again, I don't know if uh, someone else would like to ask something. Um, otherwise, I think we're almost there. And um, unless you want to uh, say your final words to conclude, I will close the session by saying that uh, for, to the audience that Oh, well, first of all, thank you for, for being here as the speakers of this in, in this event. Thank you very much. Uh, and I will remind the audience that next presentation will start at 11 a.m. This uh, session, this presentation uh, title is Investing in the Energy Renovation of Social Housing in Italy. I would also like to remind you that there is a virtual fair taking place this afternoon. Please join. It's at 2.30. And I also remember that these um, sessions are being recorded and they will be available on the conference website shortly. So if, um, uh, sorry, I do have another question here very, very quickly. Um, is the percentage of consent for renovation, you have to reach, I guess here the question is, you know, what is the percentage of Oh, I mean, of yes, that you would need in order to go forward. So I leave this question then. It's it's not a short question to answer because it needs to, to put uh, first in first place uh, Spanish uh, condominiums law. Uh, we have both Spanish condominium law and urban planning. As for the urban planning allows us to enforce con all conservation works into the buildings. So for the conservation works, we can act with our urban planning authority. We need no agreement from the condominium. As for the energy efficiency, which is something to implement to, uh, um, for the re refreshment of the buildings, that's something we cannot enforce by law. We can put it in within the project, but we cannot enforce. So that we do need an agreement from the community. So that will be a work from the mediation team and the technical team to convince the communities. As for the percentage of agreement, we will all, only we need is a majority. But a majority in, in the condominium law of Spain is a majority of uh, the assistance to the meeting, to the to the community meeting. So in any case, we know, uh, for example, banks will not assist probably to to this meeting. And other tenants, other owners who don't live there, normally don't assist there, but they just have to be enforced But whatever is agreed. So our main goal is to convince the owners that are residents in those buildings. And those normally are very conscious of the needs to improve their building. And they, uh, they, there will be our support in order to achieve this, this agreement. But as we say, the percentage is a majority, a majority of the assistance. That's how Spanish law is work. As for energy efficiency, but for conservation, it is it can be enforced by law. Hope very I've clear. answered. Very clear. Thank you very much, Yadi. Um, that reply that answers the questions perfect. The question perfectly. So uh, we only now we, we need to close. So thank you very much to everyone, uh, the speakers and the, the the those who joined us. And remember, you know, joining the virtual fair this afternoon and the next session. So thank you all. Have a good day and see you uh, in the next session. Bye bye.